place of pompous Rova, Hanumanji met with Raman Lakshman. He put both of them on his back, leaped to the top of Rishyamukha mountain, and there made allies with Sugriva. There was a yagya after the liberation of Bali performed by Hanumanji to consecrate the vow between the two to be faithful to each other for their cause. Actually, it was at that time that Bali was liberated. And after the rainy season, Sugriva sent his massive monkey armies in the four directions to search for Sita. Lord Ram had the highest confidence in Hanuman's spotless devotion. and gave Hanuman his own ring as evidence that he was truly the messenger of Sita. He said, if anyone will find her, it is you. The groups from the north South, East, West traveled everywhere. Three of the groups came back unsuccessful. And Angada, who was leading the group of Hanuman, they were convinced this was the way they saw her flying when she was in the airways with Ravana. We must find her. But they had no clues. And ultimately, after incredible stories took place, Angada decided to fast till death because he could not fulfill the order he was given. And so many of the others decided to do the same thing. Out from a cave came a gigantic bird. And he saw them there. And decided a great feast has come to me by the will of providence without my even asking. They were looking at this massive bird, thinking we are finished, he will eat us. And they started praising Lord Ram. How in search for Sita, another great bird, Jatayu, had given his life to save her, and how Ram liberated him. When Sampati heard the name, Jatayu. He became very happy. He said, Jatayu, he's my little brother. My name is Sampati. He said, many, he said, long ago, when I was flying in the sky with Jatayu, we went so high that the sun rays began to burn us. And to protect my little brother, I put my wings around him. My wings were burned off. But I was told that when the Supreme, when, when the messengers of the Supreme Personality of God had come to engage you in their service, your wings will grow back. 
He said, I have very, very strong eyes. I can see across the ocean on the island of Sri Lanka. That is the abode of Ravana. And there is Sita, the supreme goddess of fortune, the consort of Ram, who is being held in captivity. You will have to cross the ocean to meet her. And then his wings grew back and he flew into the sky. How to cross the ocean? From the place they were sitting to Sri Lanka was over 800 miles. Each of the monkey soldiers in Angada's division were exp telling the others to what extent they could jump. Angada said, I could probably make it there, but I'll never make it back. It seemed hopeless, impossible. Then Jambavan spoke. Hanuman, you have been blessed by sages to forget your own powers until someone reminds you. But you can easily cross this ocean. Why are you silent? And Hanuman remembered his powers. He said, yes, I will cross the ocean. I could cross the planet by the grace of Sri Ram. And he mounted a large hill called Mahendra and loudly crying out the name Jai Ram, he jumped after assuming an enormous size. As he jumped, the entire mountain began to sink into the earth and the lions and the tigers and the snakes and everything that was in the caves of the mountains came flying out, totally bewildered. The wind that was, a, that was created by Hanuman's jump caused thousands and thousands of trees to be uprooted and fly behind him. For Hanuman, there was nothing impossible in the service of the Lord. Because he was not concerned with life or death. He was not concerned whether something was easy or difficult. He wasn't concerned whether something was possible or impossible. He was fixed on rendering service to his beloved Ram according to his capacity. And therefore he was fearless. When we think in material consciousness, we are subjected to fear. Fear of death, fear of failure, fear of disappointing. But for Hanuman, there was only one thing, to please Ram. And Lord Ram is pleased by the sincerity of our endeavor. No impediment to please the Lord if we are sincere. And act, speak, and think in proper devotion. As he was f flying through the air, the ocean was so impressed by Hanuman, wanted to do some seva for him. So called the Vainak Mountain to come out, a golden mountain emerged from the sea. And the personification of that mountain told Hanuman, that it's a long way 
please rest for some time here. Hanuman considered this was an obstacle. Rest. Krishna says in Gita that two great enemies on the path of bhakti are egoism and lethargy. When Sita is in the captivity of Ravana and Ram is in Kishkinda Kshetra with a broken heart weeping in separation from her, not a moment could be wasted. No possibility of rest. But still you are offering. So I must accept. So for just a moment, he touched the mountain and said, I am honoring your offering. Continued. Then the mother of the Nagas was sent by the Devas. Her name was Surasa. In order to test the prowess of Hanuman to see if he was really the one who could go all alone to the fortified city of Sri Lanka to perform this impossible mission. Sarasa appeared as a very gigantic Rakshashi and she emerged from the sea right in front of him said, I have been given a benediction from Lord Brahma that no one could pass me without being eaten by me. Today I will devour you. She opened her mouth and Hanuman expanded his size. She expanded the size of her mouth. He expanded his size and she expanded his her size. Her mouth was getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. No matter how big Hanuman went, her, her, her mouth was bigger even. Then Hanumanji very quickly took a tiny little size and flew right into her mouth, walked around, went down her, went down her throat, come back up and stood in front of her and said, I have honored the benediction of Brahma, you have eaten me, now please give me your permission to go. Saras was, was very impressed by his cleverness. She blessed him, motherly blessings under extraordinary circumstances. She said, yes, you go and you be victorious for Sri Ram. Sarasa represents the obstacle on the path of reconnecting with Sita, the mother of devotion, of egoism. She kept trying to be bigger and bigger and bigger than Hanuman. Our tendency, we want to be bigger, we want to be better than others. That is a hankar, ego. The Bhagavad Gita tells us those who are bewildered by material nature think themselves the doer of their activities. This is called ahankar. As we were speaking yesterday, if we think that we are the doer of our activities, then the inclination is to be envious of people who do more, or arrogant toward people who do less. Either one spoils the spirit of true devotion. Krishna is the strength of the strong the intelligence of the intelligent, the ability in man. This is all described in detail in the Bhagavad Gita. If we honestly and earnestly consider ourselves to be instruments of the grace of God in our work, then there is no possibility of ego.
how to overcome this all-devouring monster of the false ego that is within us and all around us. Hanuman showed us. He took a very small position. Lord Chaitanya taught us Gopi Bhartur Padakamali Yorda Dasa Dasa Das Anudas. When we feel ourselves to be the servant of the servant of the servant and perform our mood, our feeling ourself to be unqualified and grateful for whatever grace that Krishna has given us. And by the grace of the Lord, we take shelter in that spirit of humility. And we can be carried by the grace of the Lord beyond this ocean of ahankar, ego. As he was flying a rakshashi, Simika. She was really very, very envious person. She saw Hanuman flying, and by her mystic power, she grabbed on to his shadow, which is cast over the surface of the ocean. And Hanuman couldn't move. There was nobody directly touching him. He was in the middle of the sky, like this. He wasn't moving. He was trying really hard. He couldn't move. Then he looked down and saw this Rakshashi holding on to his shadow and stopping his progress. Then she came before him to devour him. And she opened her mouth really big. And he became bigger. And her mouth became bigger. Hanuman again taught us the way we can overcome these gigantic obstacles is when we take a humble position. Now, Hanuman's humility was not cowardly. He was a hero. He was full of courage. He was full of enthusiasm and full of determination. Some people think that when you become humble, you become weak. Just the opposite. When you become really humble, you become divinely empowered. Hanuman took that little position and went right into her mouth, down her throat, went into her body, and with his claws, he, he ripped her organs her liver, her spleen, her kidneys, her in he ripped her heart in half. And as she was falling into the sea dead, Hanumanji flew out and carried on with his mission. She represents envy one of the greatest obstacles in the path of devotion. Just like she grabbed down to the shadow, shadow is nothing but darkness. Similarly, envious people like to focus their attention and grab on to the, the negativity of another. Try to focus on the darkness of other people. And even if there isn't any darkness, you'll see it if you have darkness in you. Shishupal saw nothing but faults in Krishna. Not because Krishna had faults, but because Shishupal had so many faults. The world is a mirror of our own consciousness. 
Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur said, one sees faults in other people because they are honeycombed, honeycombed with so many thousands of faults within themselves. A great devotee doesn't see the negativity in a person out of envy or pride, but in a spirit to help, to serve, points those things out like a doctor to a patient. Actually looking to the bright side and trying to remove the darkness. One of the great obstacles in devotional service is when we find satisfaction, we find relief, we think we're pushing ourselves to a higher position when we hold on to the shadow, the dark side of another, which means fault finding. Anuman overcame that obstacle and taught us how to do it too. We have to rip the very root cause of that envy from our hearts, that fault-finding propensity. And we can do so by taking shelter of the Lord and chanting His holy name. And on the top of this hill, most magnificent. respected all ladies, but Surasa and Simika were also. <laughs> he had to do his service. This was an emergency, so he slapped her back. <laughs> and she fell to the ground in total pain. Then she got up in ecstasy and said, Brahma told me when he gave me that benediction that someday a monkey's going to come and punch you and you're going to fall down. And on that day, that is the time. My dear Hanuman, I give you all blessings. Hanuman, Go into water. Sri Lanka. Go Sri Lanka. He waited till it was night. He wanted to see as much as he could while searching for Sita so that he could report everything very nicely. Shilanka. 
सारे लाखों राक्षस रावण की सैनिक में दस हजार करोड़ सैनिक थे हर एक के अंदर योगिक शक्तियां थी अपना रूप को बदल सकते हवा में उड़ सकते हैं वो सब सिद्धियां थी बहुत अद्भुत कार्य कर सकते थे जब उन्होंने राक्षसों को देखा करोड़ों की संख्या अनेक स्थानों की रक्षा कर दे और देखा कि कई जगह पर लोग म्यूजिक कर रहे थे कोई लोग स्त्रियों से संग कर रहे हैं कोई देखा कुछ लोग पहलवान कर रहे थे चिल्ला रहे थे कुछ हनुमान जी बहुत आश्चर्य हुए आश्चर्यचकित उनका मन जो है केंद्रित था सीता को खोजने में लगे थे और अंततः वो वो रावण के महल में पहुंचे बहुत ही सुंदर था सोने का बना सोने और चांदी का बना हुआ और हाथी के दांत का बना मणियों से सजा हुआ बहुत सुंदर स्वर के पेंटिंग बहुत सुंदर बगीचे इंद्र रावण के महल तो इंद्र से भी ज्यादा श्रेष्ठ था बहुत सारे सुंदर स्त्रियों को देखा रावण के दासियां थे एक विशेष कमरा जहां पे देखा एक बहुत बड़ा बहुत सुंदर बिस्तर था जिसमें हीरे मणिया लगे हुए थे उसमें एक विशाल भयानक व्यक्ति लेटा हुआ था रावण के पास अभी एक ही सिर था वो एक भी दिखा सकता दस भी दिखा सकता जैसे उसकी इच्छा होती शरीर वास्तव में सुंदर था ऐश्वर्यशाली था इतनी शक्तिशाली थी मोतियों के माला से भरे थे बहुत सुंदर आभूषण थे और बहुत सुंदर मालाएं थी और स्वास्थ्य से जो शराब की दुर्गंध आ रही थी और उसके इंद्र के कई निशान लगे हुए थे हमेशा विजयी रहे थे हनुमान जी सोच रहे थे अगर ये भक्त बनता है तो वो कितना महान व्यक्ति होता है वो काम और उसके पास में बहुत सुंदर स्त्री थी वो बहुत खुश हो गए कि मैंने सीता को खोज लिया राम के खोज लिया
stand before me, this entire city of Sri Lanka, I have stolen from Kuvera, my own brother. It is all yours. I will abandon स्वीकार करें मैंने राम को अपना हृदय अर्पण किया है मेरा उद्धार कर जीविता ने अंतर जस कुंटा पहुंचा देंगे
Rakshashi ladies were harassing Sita so much, and little Hanumanji, blaspheming, some of them said, if you do not submit to Ravana today, I will eat your liver, your kidneys, and your spleen with great delight. I am a Rakshashi. Sita just put her head down and cried. Cried in separation from Ram. Hanuman could not see this whole group of Rakshashis gathered around in a circle around Sita, screaming at her, threatening her. His urge was to jump down immediately and annihilate them all. But that wasn't his mission. His mission was to give a message to Sita. At that time, Trijata. Trijata was the daughter of Vibhishan. She entered into that assembly in Rakshashis and said, please listen to what happened. Last night I had a dream. In this dream, I saw Ram, in beautiful, effulgent, white clothing, on a chariot being led by a thousand white horses. And next to him was Sita. They were shining like the sun. And then I saw Ravana, dressed in black, being led on a wretched, Rakshashas, Rakshashis were expert at interpreting dreams. They understood that this was very bad. So they dispersed to go tell Ravana what they had just heard. And now Sita was all alone. Hanuman was wondering to speak to her. She's being so intimidated. And she knows that Ravana and all these Rakshashas can change their forms. If I come before her as a monkey, she may think that I'm Ravana in disguise. He was hiding right in the tree over which she was sitting under. But she didn't see him. So with his good intelligence, he started to recite the glorious pastimes of Sri Ramchandra. In the great city of Ayodhya, there was a king named Dasarat who had no children. He performed a yajna, and from the next pot of a 
magnificent celestial person. He gave it to his wives and Ram, Bharat, Lakshman, and Satrupna were born. He described the childhood pastimes of Ram, the beauty of every limb of his body, his heroism, his character. He delivered Ahalya from being a piece of rock due to the curse of Gautam Rishi. He announced the demons that were disturbing Vishramicha's sacrifice. And then he came to the kingdom of Mithila and Kiva won the hand of Sita in marriage. And how Kaikei, by her trickery due to illusion, had Ram, Sita, and Lakshman exiled. And he talked about the beautiful pastimes of Ram and Sita in Chitrakut. And the adoption of Sita by Ram. And how he was weeping and crying, searching the entire. And at Pampasrovar, how he met with Hanuman, made allies with Sugriva, and how right now in Kishkinda Chetra, of a mountain, waiting for me to come back to the news of where Sita is so that she, he could come and end my production. Ten months. Sita never heard anything so nice. She was looking around, wondering, who's speaking this? Who's speaking this? But she just, it was coming out of a tree. And finally, she was looking closer and closer as, as Hanuman was speaking, and she saw a little tiny monkey looking at her with folded hands, offering obeisances. I'm afraid. Are you, are you right? <laughs> not trick to try to seduce me? And Ram came, and Hanuman came down. Little monkey. <laughs> Said, I am Hanuman. I am Ram's servant. I've come to tell you that Ram is waiting for you. Sita asked, why hasn't he come already? Why am I so in this horrible place? Hanuman said, he doesn't know where you are. He sent me to find you. And as evidence, he gave me this ring to present to you. This was the ring that Sita gave to Ram at the time of their marriage. When she saw the ring, she held it in her hand, put it over her heart, and began to cry in separation from Sri Ram. Oh, Hanuman, how possibly could you have that massive ocean. Sri Lanka is the most impossible fortified fort in all the world to pass. How did you cross the ocean? And how did you get through all Hanuman, your devotion. 